Hey everyone, this will be a special type of video. Today we'll be going through the Manage Container Objectives for the RHCSA, and depending on how things play out, I'll be splitting the video up into multiple parts so that I can cover everything I want to show you. We have quite a few things to do, so let's get started. Now, I'll be using one of my other VMs to do this demo, so I'll just log into it real quick. There we go. And now we can install the packages we need to manage containers. So that'll just be a sudo yum install. And then we're going to install a package group aptly named container management. So remember to put an at sign and do this in quotes. And we're just going to type in container management, just like that. And we'll also get another package called Scopeo. So that's S-K-O-P-E-O. There we go, let's enter your password, and then we'll say yes to that. I'll be back when this is through. Okay, so now that we have our tools ready, let me take a moment to clarify what some of those tools are in case you don't know. So we now have an OCI compliant container runtime called CRUN. This is for actually running the containers and for managing lower level stuff like namespaces and control groups. CRUN is all about allocating the right resources to the applications that we want to containerize, basically. The container management interface that we'll be using is Podman, which works with CRUN in the background. And it's the user-friendly way that we administer our containers. So Podman is a great substitute for Docker. It stands out for not needing a central daemon, and it also doesn't need to run with elevated privileges. The tool Scopeo is used for inspecting containers and working with image repositories. And lastly, there's Builda, which is a tool for creating container images. It can use a Docker file format and an existing image, or you can use it to build a container image from scratch. So that's why they call it Builda, I guess. Uh, now let's take a second to look at the objectives again, and you'll see here that the first one is called Find and Retrieve Container Images from a Remote Registry. So to tackle this one, what we'll do first is lay some groundwork by adding and logging in to a remote registry, and then we'll use Podman to search and pull for an image. So now I'll head back to the terminal and uh, clear the screen. And now we can get to work on that objective. So when it comes to finding an image from a registry, that's as simple as running podman, search, and then your query. So I'll just search for UBI9 since I know we'll be using it later. And yeah, so here are the matches for that search and they're coming from our default list of registries. Where is that list of registries you might ask? I'll show you. So if we open up a text editor as root, and head over to etc containers registries.conf and scroll down a little bit, you'll see this unqualified search registries thing. And this is basically the search paths for looking up an image in a registry, and it's prioritized from first to last. You'll see here that registry.redhat.io is mentioned, and this is notable because it's a credentialed repository, meaning that you need a login to use it. Now let's say for whatever reason we wanted to reduce the priority of this registry. So what we could do is just move it to the end. So I'll just uh, backspace it over here and type it at the end. Registry.redhat.io. And there we go. Um, we can also add other uh, registries to our list, such as quay.io and put a comma, just like that. And uh, so we'll just save the file from here. And now if we search for UBI9 again, we'll see that we're getting the results from registry.redhead.io at the bottom. And since we added more registries like quay.io, those will show up here too, somewhere. Yeah, here they are. So that's pretty cool. Now let's say that we wanted to retrieve one of these redhead images. So let's go up to here and grab this one, I guess. Um, we can do that with podman pull and then the address of the image. So I'll just do that. And as you can see here, it's uh, complaining at us because we don't have the right credentials to pull from this repository. So this is when you would log into the registry like this. Podman login registry.redhat.io and then type in your Red Hat login. So we'll just do that. 
And, I mean, if you don't have a Red Hat login at this point, it would be a good time to make one since you'll need it to sign up for the RHCSA anyways. And you can also use it for the developer license of RHEL, so that's just a quick tip. Um, anyway, so now that I'm logged in, I will be able to fetch that image successfully now. And yeah, it's looking good. So I'm going to call that a victory. Okay, moving on to the next objective. That'll be inspect container images. Uh, this should be pretty easy. So I'll just clear the screen. And um, the reason why we would want to inspect the details of a container image in the first place is that it's a relatively big commitment to pull an image down. I mean, one image can easily be around 400 megabytes, so that's pretty huge. So this is why we have tools like Scopeo to help us get information about a specific image before we download it. And now, to use Scopeo with the Red Hat registry, we'll have to make sure to log in again as well. Um, it's just sometimes you'll have to do this. So Scopeo login registry dot red hat dot io and then enter in your credentials. Just like that. And there we go, the login succeeded. Okay, and from here, uh, we can use the subcommand scopeo inspect and provide an address to a registry image. So I'll do registry.redhat.io forward slash ubi9 forward slash httpd dash 24. So this, of course, is going to be an image that runs the HTTPD service, um, and it is based on the UBI, or Universal Base Image 9, um, container image. So that's an image for making more images, basically. Um, it's a nice starting point. And uh, yeah, remember to also put in the uh, protocol docker colon slash slash prefix to your address. This is mandatory for Scopeo but it isn't usually necessary for Podman, by the way. And um, I'll pipe this output into less so that it'll be a little bit easier for us to digest because there's going to be a lot of stuff here. So I'll just run that. And uh, yeah, so here's a good bunch of information about this image from the registry. And some things I want to point out here are the repo tags, the exposed ports, and the environment variables. So first of all um, are the repo tags. So these show us all of the different types of releases or tags that the image is available in. Um, so by default, um, if we were to pull this image, we would be grabbing the latest tag here at the bottom. But sometimes we don't want the latest and greatest, and that's why we can pull a specific release instead. Um, for example, like 1-201. So when we pull this image later, we'll go ahead and grab a specific tag of it just to demo that. Okay, and so um, another thing I wanted to show is the various properties that are revealed by this inspection. Importantly, if I search for expose, um, these are the ports that are marked to be used by the service running inside of this image. So, um, of course, they're web ports like 8080 and 8443. Um, this is pretty important stuff to know when you want to run something like HTTPD. And, uh, yeah. Lastly, I want to show how we can get some clues about the default configuration of this particular image's service. So here towards the bottom are the environment variables that are set for what looks to be the wrapper script that calls HTTPD in this container. So it's about what you would expect. Um, the document root is somewhere in var www, um, and you know, it's pretty standard for a relatively stock install of HTTPD. So um, I'll head out of less now, and we can try the other method of container inspection by using podman inspect. But hold your horses because this isn't going to work right away until we actually pull the image. So I'll just show you that by um, specifying the image here. And it's going to complain that it couldn't find it. So now let's go ahead and grab a specific tag of this HTTPD image, like 1-201 like we saw before, with podman pull, and then our image, and then we can put a colon to specify the tag, and that'll just be 1-201, just like that. And now it's going to pull the image. Um, so this will just take a moment. So there we go, it finally finished. And now you'll see that if we run podman images, you'll see that we got the exact image that we were looking for 
with the right tag. So on the other hand, um, here's the image that we pulled earlier and uh, we did not specify what tag we wanted. So Podman went ahead and gave us the latest release. So I just thought it was useful to compare these two things because it's always good to know how to be specific. Um, that's always useful in an enterprise setting. So yeah, now uh, before I wrap up the video, I'll briefly show the Podman inspect command once again. Um, now it'll work this time because we have the image locally. So uh, remember to also specify the tag that we got. It's, and then I'm going to pipe it into let's because there's going to be a lot of output here. All right, so the command ran successfully this time since we have the image pulled to our local machine. So now we can go through this output. So it'll be a little bit different than Scopeo Inspect. I'll just navigate up and down a little bit to show you some stuff. Uh, I really like this config section because it talks about things like the user ID that um, will be running the uh, initial service. And it also mentions the exposed ports like before, the environment variables. But um, importantly, uh, I like to point out this thing. So the CMD is actually the initial command that runs when we start the service. So right here is actually that wrapper script for starting the HTTPD binary. Um, obviously while also respecting all of this other information. So I guess there's other similarities between here and the Scopeo inspect command, but um, my guess is that the objectives are mainly talking about Scopeo inspect, so I'm not gonna really go too in depth with the details with this one. Uh, it's just good to know both, so that's why I'm showing you all. So I'll head out of less, and I'm gonna bring this video to a close. Yeah, so we only covered like two objectives, but we definitely learned a lot along the way. So in the next part of the series, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of starting and stopping containers and running services inside of them. So I hope you enjoyed this first part. Uh, I hope to see you in the next one, and thanks for watching.